so this is our third video of pharmacodynamics in which we are going to discuss about action of drugs on enzyme before going to this we will first look for three words that is stimulation enzyme stimulation enzyme induction and enzyme inhibition so enzyme stimulation is just increasing activity of enzyme enzyme induction means increasing number of enzyme and enzyme inhibition means decreasing activity of enzyme now drugs cannot increase the activity of enzyme means drugs usually do not act as enzyme stimulant drugs only do enzymatic induction okay so drugs can increase the number of enzyme clear now only natural metabolites which is present in our body can cause enzymatic stimulation drugs cannot i have told you earlier now most of the drugs come under this category enzyme inhibitors most of the drugs are enzyme inhibitors only handful of drugs are responsible for enzyme induction clear those drugs are rifampicin phenobarbitone carbamazepin grisofibrin okay or cigarette smoking and charcoal broiled meat so these are the drugs which are enzyme inducers now coming to the first that is non competitive type of inhibition so i am i am i will give more examples okay here one example is that aspirin aspirin inhibits your cyclooxygenase that is non competitive inhibition okay aspirin inhibition of uh, which inhibits cyclooxygenase which is responsible for formation of your prostaglandin is a type of non competitive inhibition and in this non competitive type of inhibition uh, inhibitors will bind to other site other than active site that is also known as allosteric sites okay non competitive inhibition the inhibitor will bind to the allosteric site now competitive inhibition so the inhibitor will bind to the same site uh, as to Uh, your substrate binds that is your active site clear and in competitive inhibition if you increase agonist concentration then competitive inhibition can be prevented okay so in this the inhibitor competes with enzyme to bind at receptor but as concentration of substrate increases it can be reversed there is another that is non equilibrium in this type of inhibition sub antagonist that is your inhibitor will bind to the same site that is active site but binds irreversibly clear now we will look for some examples so the first one is uh, enzyme and competitive inhibitors so dihydrofolate reductase enzyme competitively inhibited by sulfonamides dopa decarboxylase competitively inhibited by carbidopa levodopa acetyl cholinesterase competitively inhibited by physostimin phosphodiesterase 5 competitively inhibited by sildenafil and aromatase by letrazole clear yeah. non competitive inhibitors okay so here misplaced okay sorry for this now see xanthin oxidase enzyme is inhibited by allopurinol carbonic anhydrase enzyme is inhibited by acetazolamide and sodium potassium adipase is inhibited by di dioxin so these are the example of non competitive inhibitors clear now coming to the receptor so these are the enzyme based now we will move to the receptor so in receptor we will look for competitive inhibitors non equilibrium type inhibition and very less common that is non competitive receptor blocker coming to the first competitive inhibitor so beta receptor is competitively inhibited by propanol that is a beta blocker okay and this competes with adrenaline muscarinic receptor is inhibited by atropine it competes with acetylcholine nm type of receptors is competitively inhibited by chloride group of drugs which competes with acetylcholine example is vecronium or rocuronium clear and one example is non competitive receptor blocker although it is very less common but one example that is picrotoxin okay which block chloride channel on gamma receptors these blockers are rarely used most receptor blockers are competitive or non equilibrium type this is very rare non equilibrium type example is phenoxybenzamine okay a dibenzamine they are alpha receptor blocker now there are two more blockers type that is pseudo reversible blockers and pseudo irreversible blockers so pseudo reversible blockers usually they are reversible sometimes become irreversible in in the case uh, example is angiotensin receptor blocker okay pseudo irreversible blockers usually they are irreversible but at low concentration it becomes reversible example is your phenoxybenzamine so pseudo irreversible is usually irreversible but at low concentration can become reversible pseudo reversible is actually reversible and sometimes become inert in irreversible now coming to the rate of enzymatic reaction so this is michaelis equation that is v max into concentration of uh, agonist upon km plus concentration of agonist now in competitive inhibition we know km value increases okay v max remains constant in non competitive just reverse km constant v max decreases in enzyme induction in the case of enzymatic induction your km value will be constant and v max will increase in enzymatic induction and enzymatic stimulation both v max increase in both cases v max will increase but in enzymatic induction km will remain constant while in enzymatic stimulation km will decrease clear km will decrease in enzymatic stimulation okay so there are two cases in which km remains unaffected that is non competitive inhibition and enzyme induction clear now we will go for dose response curve this is very important so first before going to this dose response curve we will look for two terms that is potency and efficacy so potency is that concentration of agonist which is required to produce certain response for example that a drug a is uh, when we take in drug a 5 g b 10 g and both lower our bp by 10 mmg okay concentration is different but both of them are producing same response so we can say that a a is more potent because we are taking a in less concentration but it is producing the same effect as b of 10 g so a is more potent drug clear 
now if you can see is the maximum response that can be produced by the drug we will look for a graph then it will be clear this is uh, log dose this is response okay on y-axis response this is log dose now this is your minimal response okay this is your minimal response now four drugs a c b and d so see this is maximum response this is maximum response this is minimal response which we need minimum response so you can see that um, on minimum dose see this is your minimum response so minimum response is first achieved by a on lower concentration a achieves, a achieves the minimum response so a will be more potent but the highest response is achieved by d c d achieves highest response so efficacy of the d will be higher but potency of a is higher so among these a is most potent while d is more efficient clear we are more concerned with response hence we look for efficacy efficacy of d is the highest okay in case of emergency in case of emergency we give more effective drugs more effective drugs whose efficacy is higher okay irrespective of potency because in emergency situation we know we need highest response to save the patient so in emergency situation we look for most efficacy most um, drugs which has highest efficacy clear now but one uh, we draw one drawback with this that drugs with less drug, drugs with higher higher efficacy can cause toxicity drugs with higher efficacy can cause toxicity clear and drugs with less efficacy can lower down your toxicity conditions okay so drug with less efficacy in case of toxic conditions are safer okay now so you can also remember like this less dose more potency okay and more response more efficacy clear in emergency we look for more efficacy if drugs taken in great amount more chances of saving patient in case of drug with less, less efficacy clear so you are clear with efficacy and potency now we will look for another the use of so this this graph that is dose versus response graph can be used to see potency efficacy of the drug one one more use of this graph suppose this is your isoprenaline graph and this is your salbutamol salbutamol graph isoprenaline can produces two response bronchodilation so it is used in asthma and also tachycardia tachycardia is side effect same salbutamol also produces two effect bronchodilation and tachycardia but see in isoprenal this is dose on x axis we have put in dose so you can see between bronchodilation and tachycardia there is very little difference in concentration but in salbutamol there is large difference in concentration okay so salbutamol is safe, safe drug in compared to isoprenaline because we have a huge margin of concentration okay so we can easily reduce the side effect the tachycardia but in this we know we need more appropriate amount of drug administration because the gap is not so much okay here even a small amount of isoprenaline can cause tachycardia a small amount of isoprenaline can cause tachycardia hence we use salbutamol as it causes tachycardia at very high, con high condition very high difference hence we get to know about multiple drug action okay we can select drugs on the basis of this graph okay so it this graph also helps in drug selectivity now in emergency we one more uh, important point of this graph suppose this is a this is b okay and a has is a is more steep in compared to b so in emergency we use a because it has a steeper graph okay its action will start very earlier see suppose this is your minimum response but with what you need okay this is the minimum response which you need so minimum response is attained by a first so in emergency condition we use a clear so we can get information about rate of response of different drugs so there are four uses of this graph the first one is potency and efficacy the second one is your selectivity and the third one is your rate of response now some drugs also at that level of transporter okay uh, first that drugs which is used in depression such as tricyclic antidepressant one example is imipramine it inhibit norepinephrine reuptake okay that is norepinephrine transporter which helps in reuptake of norepinephrine also inhibits serotonin transporters clear the next one is sgl2 inhibitor example is canaglifolagine dafaglifogen okay which is used in diabetes the next one is ssri okay examples are esketolopram fluoxetin okay so these are the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors clear now drugs that act directly without receptor example is mannitol which is osmotic diuretic isafagol which is osmotically active compound which is used in constipation so antacids osmotic laxatives so they are, they are the drugs which act by either physical or chemical method clear now moving to the next point there are two more definitions that is spr receptors and silent receptors so spr receptor system in which receptor reserve is huge okay so a small amount of drug can produce effect because there are huge receptors okay but a small amount of drug by stimulating certain receptors it can produce its effects that is known as spare receptors in case of silent receptors drug bind to the receptor but do not produce any effect okay example plasma proteins which get bound to the drugs so these are the difference between spare receptors and silent receptors